Have you ever wondered if the events we are witnessing in the world today have a greater significance? Are we living in the times prophesied in the scriptures? Recently, during a quiet conversation with a dear friend, he mentioned something that made me stop and reflect deeply. He spoke about how current events seem to eerily align with biblical prophecies. At that moment, I felt a shiver and thought, are we really living in the final times mentioned in the scriptures? And what does that mean for us, Christians? It is fascinating how certain conversations can make us reconsider everything we think we know. My friend and I were just having coffee, discussing the day's news, when he brought up this idea. I remembered the stories I heard as a child about the signs of the times and couldn't help but feel a mix of curiosity and urgency. As Christians, we often read prophecies with a sense of distance, as if they were stories of a distant, perhaps even imaginary future. But what if these prophecies are unfolding right before our eyes? And what if the signs of the times are not just catastrophic events, but also subtle changes in our world, our societies, and even in our hearts? Think about it. Have you noticed how society's morality seems to be degrading? How violence, injustice, and corruption are becoming more present in our daily lives? And what about the increase in natural disasters and global conflicts? All of this fits perfectly into the warnings of the scriptures. And what does this mean for our lives and our beliefs? As we enter dangerous times, as mentioned in the Bible, the interest in biblical prophecies has grown significantly. People around the world, believers and non-believers, are increasingly fascinated and eager to understand the end times, wars, rumors of wars, nations rising against nations, famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All echo the words of Jesus in Matthew 24. Even skeptics cannot deny the frightening accuracy of the scriptures. Recently, a news anchor expressed his surprise about how Matthew 24 seems to perfectly depict the current state of the world. And it's not just in the news that we see this curiosity. Hollywood is capitalizing on the public's interest with films that incorporate elements of biblical eschatology, depicting the apocalypse and the end times. It seems that many people have a peculiar intuition that we are living in the last days. But what does that really mean? How should we prepare? And who is this enigmatic figure of the Antichrist, often mentioned in prophecies? Let's explore these questions deeply and discover how these themes impact our lives and our faith. Before we begin, subscribe to our channel and activate the notification bell. Every day, we want to help you understand the Bible easily and strengthen your walk with God. So, let's dive into this fascinating topic and see how current events may be linked to ancient biblical texts. One of the most enigmatic and feared figures in biblical prophecies is the Antichrist, also known as the First Beast. This entity, a man of great power and evil, plays a central role in the events of the end times. But who is the Antichrist? And how can we recognize his arrival? The Antichrist, also known as the First Beast, is a central figure in biblical prophecies about the end times. Various passages in the Bible provide us with detailed descriptions of who he is and what he will do. In 1 John 2:18, we read, Dear children, this is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come. This is how we know it is the last hour. John warns us that although the final Antichrist is yet to come, many other Antichrists have already appeared throughout history, indicating the approaching end. In 2 Thessalonians 2, 3-4, Paul gives us a more detailed description. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. He will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God, or is worshipped, so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. Here Paul describes the Antichrist as someone who exalts himself above everything divine, even claiming to be God. Biblical prophecy also warns us about the activities of the Antichrist. In Daniel 
it says he will confirm a covenant with many for one seven. In the middle of the seven, he will put an end to sacrifice and offering. And at the temple he will set up an abomination that causes desolation until the end that is decreed is poured out on him. This passage indicates that the Antichrist will make a covenant with many nations but will break that covenant and bring desolation. In Revelation 13 by 7 we read that it was given power to wage war against God's holy people and to conquer them. And it was given authority over every tribe, people, language, and nation. The Antichrist will have vast power and will be a great persecutor of the saints, trying to destroy the faith of those who follow God. Given these descriptions, it is essential that we remain vigilant and firm in faith. Jesus warned us in Matthew 24, 24, for false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Our best defense against deception is an intimate relationship with God and a deep knowledge of the scriptures. The figure of the Antichrist serves as a reminder that evil can disguise itself as good and that we must always be alert. In times of uncertainty, it is crucial that we cling to God's truth and prepare ourselves spiritually strengthening our faith and our community of believers. Throughout history, many influential figures have been speculated to be the Antichrist based on their actions, charisma, and power. These speculations reflect the ongoing search for patterns and signs that might indicate the fulfillment of biblical prophecies. Let's explore some of these historical and contemporary examples. One of the first candidates for the title of Antichrist was the Roman Emperor Nero. Ruling from A.D. 54 to 68, Nero was notorious for his brutal persecution of Christians. He is often remembered for acts of extreme cruelty and for ordering the execution of many followers of Christ. Interestingly, when the name Nero Caesar is transliterated into Hebrew, its numerical values add up to 666, the number of the beast mentioned in Revelation 13, 18. During World War II, Many saw Adolf Hitler as the Antichrist due to his genocidal actions and his attempt to dominate the world. Hitler led the Nazi regime, which was responsible for the Holocaust, the extermination of six million Jews. His regime of terror and genocide seemed to fit perfectly with the description of an evil leader prophesied in the scriptures. More recently, Tim Cohen, in his book The Antichrist and a Cup of Tea, suggested that Prince Charles could be the Antichrist. Cohen argues that Charles possesses the lineage, influence, and religious and political significance necessary to play this role. He examines the heraldry of the British royal family and draws parallels between the Prince of Wales and biblical prophecies. In the modern era, billionaires like Bill Gates, Elon Musk, and Mark Zuckerberg are often seen as potential Antichrists due to their vast wealth and global influence. Their technological and philanthropic ambitions are interpreted by some as attempts to create a utopia on Earth, aligning with the false promises of peace and prosperity attributed to the Antichrist. Bill Gates His efforts in global health through the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, as well as his significant influence in the tech sector, have led some to suspect his intentions. Elon Musk Known for his innovations in transportation, both on Earth and in space, Musk is seen by some as having the potential to control vital aspects of modern life. Mark Zuckerberg With the global influence of Facebook and his ability to shape public opinion, Zuckerberg is another name frequently cited in speculations about the Antichrist. Given these speculations, it is important to remember that identifying the Antichrist should not be based on conspiracy theories but on a clear understanding of the scriptures. But what are the characteristics of the Antichrist? Let's understand better below. The Antichrist will be like a wolf in sheep's clothing, presenting himself as a savior, but with sinister intentions. In 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, 4, Paul warns us, don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. He will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped, 
so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. Like a shadow creeping in the darkness, the Antichrist will seek to deceive humanity, claiming to be divine and demanding worship. He will use his influence to position himself in the place of God, diverting the hearts and minds of true followers. The Antichrist will not only claim to be God, but will also blaspheme against the true God, spreading lies like spider webs, trapping those who allow themselves to be deceived. In Revelation 13, 5-6, we read, The beast was given a mouth to utter proud words and blasphemies, and to exercise its authority for forty-two months. It opened its mouth to blaspheme God, and to slander his name and his dwelling place and those who live in heaven. And this sinister figure will be like a storm that darkens the sky, attempting to extinguish the light of truth with its deceitful words. His ability to blaspheme against God and divert worship to himself will be one of the clearest signs of his identity. Jesus warned us about the coming of false Christs and false prophets who would perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. In Matthew 24, 24, he says, For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. The Antichrist will be like a distorted mirror, reflecting a false image of holiness and power. He will perform signs and wonders, not as a light for the path but as will-o'-the-wisps, illusions that divert people from the truth and lead them astray. In addition to his divine claims and blasphemies, the Antichrist will establish a global control system. In Revelation 13, 16, 17, it is written, It also forced all people, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hands or on their foreheads, so that they could not buy or sell unless they had the mark, which is the name of the beast, or the number of its name. This system will be like an invisible web, entangling all aspects of daily life. Just as a spider web captures its prey, the Antichrist system will capture those who submit to it, demanding complete loyalty in exchange for participation in the global economy. The number 6666 is perhaps one of the most recognized and intriguing symbols in the Bible, directly associated with the Antichrist. In Revelation 13, 18, we read, This calls for wisdom. Let the person who has insight calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. That number is 6666. This number, 666, is seen as an identifier of the Antichrist, a mark that symbolizes imperfection and evil, in contrast to the number seven, which symbolizes divine perfection and completeness. The number six, repeated three times, underscores human failure and rebellion against God, marking the Antichrist as the personification of this rebellion. The construction of the third temple in Jerusalem is seen as a significant event in the context of end times prophecies. Currently, there has been no Jewish temple in Jerusalem, since the destruction of the Second Temple in A.D. 70. However, many biblical prophecies point to the existence of a temple during the last days. In Daniel 9.27 we read, He will confirm a covenant with many for one seven. In the middle of the seven he will put an end to sacrifice and offering. And at the temple, he will set up an abomination that causes desolation until the end that is decreed is poured out on him. This passage speaks of a covenant that will be made and broken, resulting in the cessation of sacrifices and the installation of an abomination in the temple. Jesus references this event in Matthew 24, 15, 16. So when you see standing in the holy place, the abomination that causes desolation, spoken of through the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Jesus warns that when this abomination occurs, it will be a clear sign that the end times are near and people should take immediate precautions. The mention of the number 666 and the construction of the third temple are interlinked in prophecies about the end times. The number 6666 identifies the Antichrist and his system while the construction of the third temple sets the stage for apocalyptic events. The abomination of desolation, 
an act of desecration in the temple, will be a clear sign that the Antichrist is in full power and fulfilling biblical prophecies. This event will mark a period of great tribulation and persecution, as described in various passages of Scripture. The construction of the Third Temple in Jerusalem is one of the most anticipated signs by students of biblical prophecy. However, given the current political and religious complexities, the idea of building a new temple on the Temple Mount seems almost impossible. This area is a sacred site for both Jews and Muslims, and any movement to build a Jewish temple could provoke significant conflict. However, the scriptures suggest that during the tribulation period, this temple will be built. This teaches us to look beyond human political possibilities and trust in God's sovereign plan. Daniel 9.27 and Matthew 24.15.16 indicate that this event will occur, serving as a sign for those who are attentive to the end times. Revelation 19.20 gives us a vision of the final fate of the Antichrist and the false prophet. But the beast was captured, and with it the false prophet, who had performed the signs on its behalf. With these signs he had deluded those who had received the mark of the beast and worshipped its image. The two of them were thrown alive into the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This passage assures us that despite the great power and influence the Antichrist will have for a time, his end is determined and will be defeated by God's power. In a world filled with distractions and contemporary challenges, such as the incessant pursuit of material success and the constant distractions of modern life, it is essential that Christians maintain discernment and caution when interpreting current events in light of biblical prophecies. Jesus warned us about false Christs and false prophets in Matthew 24:24 saying they would perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. This warning is extremely relevant today, when many are easily drawn to charismatic leaders and promises of quick solutions to the world's problems. Christian teachings offer a solid foundation to face contemporary challenges. Instead of seeking only material success, we are called to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, Matthew 6, 33. This helps us maintain the correct perspective and focus on eternal values instead of being consumed by temporary concerns and distractions. Additionally, the Christian faith teaches us to live balanced lives, dedicating time to prayer, studying the scriptures, and serving others. In Romans 12, 2, Paul exhorts us, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. This transformation allows us to discern God's will and live according to His purposes, even amidst the complexities of modern life. As we reflect on the signs of the times and the imminence of the events prophesied in the scriptures, it is crucial to understand the urgency of living a life of faith and obedience. We do not know the day or the hour when these events will occur, but we are called to be prepared. In Matthew 24:44, Jesus said, So you also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect Him. Giving our lives to Jesus is the first step. If you haven't done so yet, consider giving your heart to Christ today seeking salvation and a personal relationship with Him. For those who already follow Jesus, this is a time to strengthen our faith, deepen our understanding of the Scriptures, and live according to God's teachings. Our mission is not only to prepare ourselves, but also to help others find truth and hope in Christ. Therefore, we encourage you to subscribe to our channel to continue receiving uplifting and inspiring messages. Like and share this video with friends and family helping to spread God's word and strengthen the faith of those around you. Leave your suggestions and opinions in the comments. We want to know what you think and how we can help more people understand biblical prophecies and live according to Christian principles. Your participation is essential for us to grow together as a community of faith. As we navigate contemporary challenges and prepare for the end times, remember that God is in control. He has given us His Word as a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Psalm 119, 105. May we live with discernment and wisdom, keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, 
the author and finisher of our faith. Hebrews 12.2 May God bless you and your family. May He strengthen your faith, guide your steps, and fill your heart with peace and hope. Continue to seek the truth in the Scriptures, live a life of obedience, and share the message of salvation with everyone around you. See you in the next video. May the peace of Christ be with you. A big hug, and see you next time.